Hello everyone and welcome to Blender Animation Tutorials. In this tutorial series, I explain the essential Blender concepts and tasks that you need to know in order to create complex simulations. In this particular tutorial, we will learn how to reverse animations in Blender. Here is the plan. First, we will create a simple animation of a translating and rotating cube. Then, we will reverse the animation in order to obtain the complete movement cycle. Here is the animation. Depart from here until here shows the forward movement of the cube. Then we will reverse this animation to obtain the second part. That is, the cube goes backward. That is, we will create a single cycle that consists of forward and backward cube translation and rotation. It took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this completely free video tutorial. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you have some questions or a comment about the material presented in this lecture, please feel free to ask your question in the comment section below. Okay, let's start from scratch. First, click on File, New, General. Here is an empty Blender workspace. First, I will need to make a few adjustments such that you can see the keyboard and mouse button that I'm pressing. This will help you to more easily reproduce this example on your computer. To do that, I will run a simple script and you probably don't have this script, so don't worry about it. Here's the script that I will run. Now, if I press the left mouse button, you will see the button being pressed over here, the middle button over here, and the right button over here. Similarly, if I press a key, for example, H, you will see over here. In this way, you can more easily follow this lecture. Now, since some of you might not be familiar with Blender, I need to explain a few important things. First of all, you can select objects by using the left mouse click. Now I'm selecting the object. Then you can translate or pan slide a view by pressing Shift and by holding the middle mouse button. Then, you can rotate the view by holding the middle mouse button and by moving the mouse. Finally, you can zoom in or zoom out the view by pressing Ctrl and the middle mouse button and by moving the mouse. If you have a mouse with a rolling middle button, then you can use the rolling middle button to zoom in or zoom out. First, let's change the default color of this cube in order to make this animation more interesting. To do that, first click over here, then click over here, then click over here to select the checker texture. Okay, now let's change these colors. To do that, press over here and let's select, for example, yellow. Then let's change the second color, press over here, and then let's choose red color. Perfect. Okay. Here's our cube. Let's create a forward animation. Expand this menu over here. This is our timeline. Next, click over here, select the box, and move the box to its initial location. For example, over here. OK. Now, over here, make sure that this slider is at the first frame. Then do the following, press I to bring this insert keyframe menu and click on location. You can immediately see this yellow square over here. This means that we defined our first frame. That is, the first frame will correspond to this location. Okay, let's define the end frame. Then move the slider, for example, to the frame 150, then click over here, move the box, for example, over here, then press I. Here, make sure that the cursor is here to, when, you, when you're pressing I. So again, press I and click on location. Okay, this is the end frame. Now, here's the magic. You can see what happens. 
we animated the forward movement. Okay, let's add rotation in order to make this animation more interesting. To add rotation, again, go to the first frame, then, again, I, click on rotation, then go to the frame 150, then over here, press R, and you can see that we can rotate the cube. Now, to constrain the rotation around the z-axis, press Z, and then let's enter the angle. The angle is 360 degrees, and press Enter. After that, press I, and press Rotation. Perfect. Let's visualize what actually happened right now. Okay, the last frame, and here it is. The cube is rotating and translating at the same time. Perfect. Now, let's reverse this animation. We want the cube to go from here to here. To do that, let's select the cube. Then, over here, we need to expand our simulation in order to make it more symmetric. So click over here and change this number to 300. Okay, now move this slider to the frame 300, then go back, click on the first keyframe, then Control C to copy it, then over here press Control V. So what happened over here? We simply copied the location and the orientation of the cube from the first frame to the frame 300. And let's play this animation. You can play the animation by pressing space. And here it is. Forward. Stop. And backward. That's precisely what we wanted to happen. Okay, so we learned how to reverse the animation. However, let us further analyze the motion. To analyze the motion, click over here and click on Graph Editor. Graph Editor is very important. It shows you the movement as the function of the actual frame. On this x-axis is the frame number and on the z-axis you can find x, y, or z location, that is x, y, and z coordinates as functions of the frame, and you can also see the rotation angles as functions of the frame. Expand this menu, and you can see, for example, over here the x location. So this is how the x location of our cube behaves with respect to time. This is the y location, and you can clearly see what happens. Here's the y-axis, and here's the z-location. z more or less stays constant. Now, here's the rotation angle around the z-axis, and we can see what happens over here by analyzing the graph. The animation goes in this way, consequently, the box rotates, then what happens with the angle? Angle reaches 360 degrees over here, that is the peak, and then it starts to decrease. Perfect. Now, over here, you should observe one very important thing. You can see that at the beginning, the box starts to accelerate, then it moves with more or less constant velocity, then the acceleration is being decreased, and finally the box stops. In some animations, you don't want that. That is, you want the box to rotate and to move with constant velocity starting from the first frame. To achieve that, you need to click over here, select everything, then do the right click, and you need to select the interpolation mode. Currently, the interpolation mode is Bezier. However, to achieve constant motion, that is, to achieve the constant velocity and constant angular velocity, you need to select linear. And let's see the effect. So let's see what happens. Yeah, you can immediately see 
that the velocity is constant and the angle of rotation is constant. Perfect. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.